Hello and welcome to another Orbiter video. It's been a really long time since I've said those words. In fact, before I decided to make this video, I looked up when it was that I posted my last Orbiter video. And it turns out that was on May 11th, 2015. And as I'm recording this video, it's now May 29th, 2021. So I did a little date calculation to find out how long ago it was that I posted my last video. And it's been six years and 18 days. And all the time since then, I really haven't spent any time with Orbiter. It's been almost zero. In fact, to record uh, this video here today, I actually downloaded Orbiter 2016 a couple of days ago. Downloaded a couple of MFDs, downloaded the sound module. So I haven't really spent any time with Orbiter in the last six years, so I am extremely out of practice. In fact, I don't really feel like I know what I'm doing anymore. Uh, luckily, I have a whole series of videos that I myself can go back and watch to get up to speed. But I thought what I would do here today, I thought it would be interesting just to see what I could do just kind of from memory. And uh, now I have actually spent a tiny amount of time in Orbiter uh, yesterday just to get everything installed and working and loaded and to kind of remember what some of the hotkeys are. But other than that, I haven't uh, done anything, like I said, in like, basically six years. So the first thing I thought I would do in this video is just uh, something that would have been trivial, uh, something that would have been just super simple for me a few years back, which is just to take off, go to the International Space Station, and dock. So I'm planning on breaking this video up into three parts. Uh, part one will just be getting into a stable orbit. Part two will be the rendezvous process, and then part three will be docking. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump in and get started. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here. All right, so I'm going to unpause the simulator, and here we go. So uh, some of the things I remember, um, we can't just take off and head towards space with no plan we have to uh we have to leave earth at a certain time so and i remember that the opportune time to do that is when the line of uh the orbital line for the iss is passing really close to our location here at cape canaveral that's where we're at so uh let's uh bring up a line plane on this side over here and we're going to target the ISS and it looks like currently the time to the node is 894 seconds and I remember that this time is uh, completely inaccurate until you actually get close to that to that time when it will be uh, will be passing overhead until then you can kind of ignore that time something I do remember and then I'm going to use the uh, map up the map MFD on this side that's already loaded to change over to the orbit plane. I'm going to hit OK. And I remember we have two opportunities to go to the ISS. Once, uh, one opportunity is when the ISS is kind of coming down out of the north, going south, and the other opportunity is when the ISS is coming up out of the south and going north. And I also remember that uh, generally. Well, I think exclusively uh, NASA would only launch in the uh, when the ISS was coming up out of the south and going to the north. And I think that was because of um, uh, you know in case something went wrong, they would they had more options to uh, to recover or to to land safely somewhere else. But for the sake of the simulation, it doesn't really matter which one we choose. I will switch over to these larger MFDs. Well, I guess technically I didn't set these up as being larger but uh, they still look a little bit better for me. So, uh, so yeah, first thing I'm going to do is just warp time forward until we have a, uh, an opportunity to, to take off. So we're probably going to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip this one uh, so, so I can see that the next opportunity I'm going to have is when the ISS is coming down out of the north and going south. And I can't remember the exact heading for that. I want to say it was 143 degrees. Uh, I'm not even sure. Yeah, I can't remember. I think that sounds right, though. But I definitely remember 
the other direction when going out of the south and going north, the heading that you want to fly at is 43 around there to get your relative inclination low. So I'm going to go ahead and warp time forward. We're going to pass up this opportunity and keep going around to the next time. So let's go a little faster. And let's go a little faster, a little faster, kind of bouncing back and forth between 10,000 and 1,000, but it's really easy to overshoot, so we don't want to do that. And I can see the line is now approaching, and this time is counting down, so we're getting really close to time to launch. Now, I don't have my joystick set up, and I really don't like flying up out of the atmosphere without it, so I imagine my initial descent is going to be pretty clunky. Uh, not the least of which, uh, just the lack of experience, you know, six years and 18 days. But, uh, and I, I remember the time that we want to go for is around 300 seconds, uh, three, 300 to 330, I think, something like that. I don't think it has to be absolutely precise, but uh, so we're about 325. We'll, we'll hit the go button at uh, 315. So that's where I'll press the plus key on the numeric keypad, hold it, and then tap control to lock that in. And here we go. And I will be flying using the numeric keypad, which I really don't like to do. I think I still have the volume a bit too high, maybe, so I'll have to turn that down. Okay, time to take off, I would say. All right, wheels up, lift up the landing gear. Yeah, I really don't like flying with the keypad. <laughs> All right, so we're going to turn to a heading of about 43 degrees. And we're going to fly at that heading while we go with our initial ascent. Oh, and I should say I'm using the standard Delta glider. I do have the XR installed, but uh, I'm so out of practice, I would probably just melt the thing on takeoff. So I'm using the much more durable standard delta glider that's made of unobtainium and can't be destroyed really. So we're going to lift up to a pretty steep heading to get up out of the thick atmosphere. And actually while we're doing that, I'm going to turn down the volume a bit because it seems a bit loud. So hopefully that's better for the video playback. Okay, now we need to pay attention to our, and actually I don't think I have controls on. I do, okay. Let's go ahead and bring down the nose of the, the Delta glider a little bit. Watching the line of no, uh, watching the relative inclination over there, watching my rate, and watching the time to the node which is still counting down, so I think I'm happy with all of that at the moment. So we're just going to continue on at this, with this flight, just as it is at the moment. And I guess we don't really need map on this side, so let's bring up orbit and change the projection to the ship, change the frame, I don't think it matters, and then we'll change the, uh, the distance to APA, PEA for that'll be a bit easier to read all right so yeah getting up into orbit does take a while and I don't want to use time warp because that's just gonna mess up our flight now I'm watching my time to note it's counting down awfully slowly so I think what I might actually want to do is bank a little bit to the right which will actually decrease my rate so it's going to make my relative inclination come down a bit more slowly, but it will uh, bring the time to the node. It will continue to bring the time to the node down because I don't want to overshoot that. I think that might mean I just took off a little too soon. I'm not sure. Take a quick look at the external. Go ahead and close out that menu up there by pressing F4. Go back to the internal view. 
And yeah, we just have to be patient here, fly up through the atmosphere, get into space, going for approximately a 200 kilometer by 200 kilometer initial orbit. So I think the plan for this initial video will be, we'll get into space, we will make sure that we have a uh, stable orbit, and then we'll save and we'll move on to the next part, which will be a separate video. So I guess while we're getting up to orbital velocity, I can talk a little bit about just what it is that I've been up to for six years. So some people have posted questions on some of my orbiter videos or have asked me on my Facebook fan page, you know, what, I, what it is that I've been up to. I, I'm pretty sure I talked about this a little bit in my last couple of orbiter videos that I ever posted, but essentially, you know, after my double lung transplant in 2013, I decided that I wanted to go back to, wanted to get back into school. So that was, that's the bulk of what I've been up to for the last several years, although I finally did graduate. I finished my associate degree in 2016, and then I continued on to pursue a bachelor's degree. And my bachelor's degree is in mechatronics engineering, and I finished that in December of 2019. After that, let's see, let's, uh, let's turn, let's bank a bit to the left because now our time to the node is almost, it's pretty much there. So we want to, we want to get uh, our, our rate going down quickly now. In fact, let me pitch up a little bit at the same time because basically we are on the node right now and we just want to bring that relative inclination down rapidly. Yeah, again, this is so much easier with the joystick, in my opinion. Okay, so we're seeing that relative inclination is coming down quickly. And let's start rolling out. And now we're going to have to, like, fly this really fine line for the next while to keep that relative inclination down where we want it. 0, 0.0 is fine. I think what I'll do at this point, I think I'm going to go to this view and I'm going to gimbal the engines a little bit because I can see that my... So they switched the way this uh, works. It used to be right clicking would go to the right, left clicking would go to the left. I noticed that's no longer the case. I think I liked it better the old way. <laughs> now you just left click and if you left click on the left part of it, it goes to the left. If you left click on the right part of it, it goes to the right. And I think I prefer the old way better. So I noticed that my velocity vectors dropped below the horizon a little bit, which means I'm going to be losing altitude. So I'm going to gimbal the engines just a bit to hopefully hold my uh, myself up. And let me, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have to bank back and forth a bit to keep that relative inclination from from increasing but uh, you know if we arrive in space with a relative inclination of zero anything even if it's like zero nine nine I think I'll be pretty content considering you know how long th how long it's been since I've done any of this uh, so we're um, about not quite half orbital, well, probably right about now, about half orbital velocity, so we got a little bit more to go. And uh, so where was I? So anyway, after graduation, I started looking for a job right away, and I uh, found a place, and we've been, been working there now. It's been one year and a little over a month, so just about 13 months. So that's obviously keeping me busy. And and I've, I picked up some new interests uh, through school as well. Um, part of my part of my studies involved uh, quite a bit of electronics, you know, as the name would imply, mechatronics engineering. And I found that I, I really, really enjoyed uh, messing around with uh, uh, microcontrollers and devices like that working with sensors and 
um, I did a did a couple of robotics projects in school and again really really found that I enjoyed that stuff a lot all right let's switch over to rotation and that that took up a those new interests that took up some time as well because I uh, have a whole lab in the back of my house now with a, a oscilloscope and uh, multimeters, lab power supplies, got a function generator and um, so I, I like to do projects whenever whenever time permits although unfortunately I my, my, my job while I do enjoy it I don't actually get to do work with that type of stuff um, in the, at the job I currently have. So, uh, what else? So we're at 55 right now. We got a, quite a bit more to go to orbital velocity. Relative inclination is not looking super pretty. Let's see if we can bank hard and maybe do something about that. But again, you know half a degree can't really complain about that but we can looks like we can improve it a little bit with uh, just by banking our vessel certain certain directions trying to keep the nose up above the the horizon there all right so our APA is currently about 70 kilometers we're at 6.3, so we've got another 1,000 plus velocity that we need to gain. Yep, let me bank hard the other way. Alright, we got that relative inclination nice and low again. Let's see if we can go back to. Uh, So the time to the apoapsis looks like it's still behind us, but uh, right. oh, yeah, it's like trying to balance on a razor's edge when you get get to this point. All right, so we're getting pretty close to orbital velocity, so the APA is going to just really take off here soon. So we got to keep a close eye on that. It's really easy, if, you know, if you, you get focused on like your relative inclination or something, and then you're not paying attention. Like right now, the APA. Let's kill the engines right there, and let's just kind of hold right here while we. Uh... Boy, I lost a lot of altitude, didn't I? All right, time to re-engage the engines. I'm sloppy. You have to. I think I messed up this ascent. Let's see if we can climb up out of. You know, one thing I used to do to help keep the nose up, trim down. Wrong well, rail. I guess this is backwards. All right, so that should help us keep our nose up above the horizon so that we're continuing to increase our altitude. Yeah, this was a fairly sloppy ascent, but, you know, take six years off and see what happens. <laughs> but I think we're going to be okay. Probably use a lot more fuel than we needed to, but uh, that's all right. Not bad for a first attempt, I would say. And, you know, anybody that ever watched my Absolute Beginner Guide, you know, I always told them, you know, if you're going for the ISS and you in, if you arrive in space with a relative inclination of, you know, one or two degrees on your first try, I mean, you're, you're doing really well, in my opinion. All right, so we still have a bit of dynamic pressure here at this point. So let's, uh, let's keep climbing. 
and you see we still have some some drag but we are quickly ascending still yeah I think the mistake I I think the big mistake I made on that ascent was I didn't trim the elevator so my my and I wasn't I was so focused on the relative inclination and the uh, the the altitude that I wasn't paying attention to where my nose was at on the horizon and I was uh and I, I lost like 10 kilometers or something but we recovered so so it's okay now we're 80 kilometers let's bring back up orbit MFD so my APA is a bit higher than I would really like it to be because I remember saying at the outset that I was going to go for a 200 by 200 so we missed our target we can still rendezvous with no problem but uh, you know I, I like to I like to have a plan and then, then execute that plan in this case uh, we had a plan and we failed to execute the plan so we're up here at 90 uh, kilometers now so uh, don't really have to open the radiator on this vessel but we will anyway and I guess it's not on this panel so it's up here okay so that's just a good habit I think especially if you plan on using the XR2 because uh, the XR2 will have issues if you don't open the radiator so I like to keep that habit even on vessels that don't need it all right well so we we said that our plan was 200 by 200 and and even though so so we have an option here what we can do is we can go to our apoapsis bring up our PEA to 200 then go uh, around to a uh, periapsis and then bring down our apoapsis we could do that if we want if we want to stick to that original plan or we can say we just our plan failed so we're just going to keep the altitude that we have and and make it work but uh, let's switch over to the orbit HUD and let's go ahead and go to apoapsis and we can see that that time is a thousand seconds away and we are going to continue to climb at that up to that point so we don't have to worry about you know running into the atmosphere so we can um, safely time warp now around to that point and we get to around 100 seconds uh, thereabout we want to come out of time warp about right here come out of time warp and give our ship time to settle into the prograde position I don't really like all these back I, I thought I shut those off um, it's more efficient to use the thrusters and use a little bit of time warp to get your ship into position but since I'm virtually an absolute beginner at this point <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and use prograde autopilot and I'm really close to prograde anyway so it's not wasting too much fuel to do that we'll go ahead and time warp get over to AP uh, get over to apoapsis Honestly, I do not remember how to use burn time calculator. I think I did install it. I think. I guess I did not, but it doesn't matter because I don't remember how to use it anyway. So once we get closer to our high point, we'll just uh, we'll circularize the orbit manually. Whereas, uh, you know, in the past I would always use uh, burn time calculator to do that and again I think that's more realistic I don't think that anybody flying in space does anything manually you know it's all programmed and executed all right so we're pretty close so we'll go ahead and engage a little bit of main engine start bringing up the other side of our orbit and as we get closer and closer to zero APT we'll add in more thrust all right and uh, we're going to go ahead and do 200 PEA. And probably still need a little bit of main engine. Get a little bit closer. All right, there we are. Now, because we said 200, we'll back up. There we are. So we have a apoapsis of 303, which was not according to plan. And we have a periapsis of 200 kilometers exactly. Uh, again, if we want, we can go around to uh, 
to periapsis and then bring down the side of our orbit. But I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to go with what we have here. So that's going to be it for this part of this uh, short series I'm doing. And when we come back, we'll do the next several steps that are required in order to rendezvous with the ISS. And then we'll have a third video where we actually do the docking procedure. Let me switch over. So if you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. And I will see you in the next video.